our experiences will be main rele relevant perhaps in a low intensity conflict where the space for advocacy had not died down. And just to give you a glimpse of um, Nepal's conflict, uh, in April uh, 2006, there was a historic uprising in Nepal. It was a phenomenal and which restored the House of Representatives. There were several pockets where the, the intensity of conflict was high. And like in the region I was based, you know, like bomb blasts were usual and then then things were very difficult. Several daunting challenges, including personal threats. Like I even had received a, like threats, you know, individually and my staff, the staff I, I, would, I was managing also had received several threats. But we could resist ourselves because of our right best work. I'll tell you how later on. And the tr we gained the trust of the middle society as the middle force or the middle ground. Basically, we are caught in between. But you know, sometimes we face this group, negotiated with this group, and sometimes we face that, that group, negotiated with that group. But eventually, the civil society in Nepal could, credible, could establish its, its, its credibility that when it comes to real matter, matter with the issue of democracy, issue of people's rights, then this is a middle ground. Challenges. Is right-based approach in conflict feasible? Is it an idea, a concept, or something that can be used? That was the big question. We asked ourselves, and the answer was, uh, the difficulty was that when you go through right-based approach, then you create additional expectation on, from the communities for you to speak out. I'll give you an example. When on 1st February 2005, the king took over the power, the people would ask us and come us and say that, okay, until yesterday you were talking about big things. Now the civil and political rights have been violated. Why don't you speak? If we, the people, who were, you were preaching us yesterday and we are out in the street, why don't you come to the streets? That was the biggest channel. And it be, because if you are right based, then the people expect you to speak. Yeah? And there are hard institutional realities where you can't speak beyond one limit. Sometimes you can't speak at all. That was the biggest channel. What we did was that first develop the analysis of doing the conflict analysis. And then we saw what are the risks and opportunities. And sometimes we spoke out, but not, we were not suicidal and not very daring. We had always taken into account the risks and opportunities. Sometimes when we thought it was safer to do, the, do so, we spoke out ourselves as Action Aid Nepal. If we speak, we'll be singled out. Then we looked for opportunities where 20 organizations could speak together so that you make yourself less, less visible and also increase the political weight of your communication because it's the 20 INGOs, international NGOs. We have association of INGOs in Nepal, which, uh, which, ha, uh, which has the membership of about 60 uh, international NGOs. Legitimacy of the organization is very important. <clears throat> One is, how, how does this legitimacy come? Working with the communities, that is the best source. Work with, we, we started working with the more excluded groups and we started hiring local staff. It involves challenges and opportunities. Yeah? Hiring local staff may bring in internal dynamics. In one instance, our program was targeted, physically attacked, because according to one of the staff, one person had applied, but that guy didn't get the job, later on joined the Maoist. And that dynamics was catalyst. So, uh, an organization looks beautiful when it's multicultural, but in a conflict context, it gives you additional, brings additional things that you become more legitimate. Because you are, you reflect the population composition, local population composition. What were the positive re results, general positive results? Negotiation of space by communities with conflict parties. That could be done. And we had several instances where like a tractor of the ex-bonded laborers were taken away by the uh, Maoist. And the community went with them and negotiated the space, talked with them, but we didn't go. That is the difference. When the community goes ahead, then they could negotiate this space. And previously, when we were st at the start of the projects, we wouldn't imagine that the communities would be able to go and negotiate. Because it was clearly through their empowerment process, this could become possible. And this is not only, we have the experience of negotiating this space with the government as well. It's not with the Maoists only.